if someone's eating organic and avoiding GMOs and they've noticed great changes in their life and they're feeling better, what's next? Well, th this comes down to the responsibility of this generation. Uh, Amy, and I, Amy Hart and I did a film called Secret Ingredients where we talked about switching to organic and kids with autism were no longer on the spectrum, infertile couples had babies. I mean, dramatic changes. And these were not just one-offs. We have evidence. We've surveyed over 3,000 people. I've asked thousands at, at live talks. Similar results. So if you are in one of those categories, you understand certain laws of nature. You're away, you, and you have the clarity and energy supported by an organic diet. Now it's time to do the activism appropriate to your life. Now, I'm an anti-GMO activist. I'm protecting the, the gene pool. I think that that's something that many, many people can be involved in, even as a click and send non-GMO revolutionary, even by going to protectnaturenow.com, signing up and sharing everything that you get, going to our Facebook page for the Institute for Responsible Technology and reposting everything that's a way to very easily and simply move the needle. For others, we have more in-depth knowledge. So for this deeper training, there's the opportunity to learn to speak on it. We have activist opportunities to implement laws and policies and resolutions around the world. We have a global plan. So I think at this time, there's a calling for this generation to step into a more responsible role. And I want to be careful to say, I don't think everyone in the world should all of a sudden become a, a anti-GMO activist and their main focus is to protect the microbiome and all other living beings. I understand that people have their own calling, but I encourage people to follow that to move forward in that, to think huge, thinking big is so last century, that we have huge problems, we need huge responses, and some people wait around for permission. So if you need to hear it, you have permission. You have permission to step into the highest version of yourself, to step into a partnership with nature, to step into a partnership with perhaps the reason you're here. And while you're at it, no matter what you're doing, Please lend some help to our emerging movement because the future of humanity and all living beings is dependent. So whether it's sharing information, making a regular recurring donation, telling friends about it, or even signing up at protectnaturenow.com so that you can be aware, so that we call forth to send a letter or send, send a petition, sign a petition, send a note to your congressman or senator, and we will be asking, and it will be pre-written so you don't have to do anything unless you want to customize it. We will make it easy and entertaining and fun and planet-saving. So especially for those that understand the laws of nature regarding health and diet and have the effect of that in their lives, I'm calling on you to become part of the spiritual activism, the earth's activism, and to step into your highest version now. So I'm, I'm encouraging people to say yes to what they may have been partially saying yes to their whole lives. What's the current state of affairs around GMOs in the United States and around the world? I have been working to educate consumers about the health dangers of GMOs for 25 years. This is my 25th anniversary. And when I started, no other nonprofit organization was focused at all on the health dangers. There was resistance to my taking a position on that. 
it was like, we can't argue that. That's, you know, the scientists can argue that, but we can't argue that because somehow the Monsanto framing that, you know, it's like, don't worry your pretty little head about it. Um, it's not something for the average consumer to understand. We understand it and we tell you it's safe. Well, I wrote a book, Seeds of Deception, and then another book, Genetic Roulette, and gave a thousand lectures in 45 countries and a thousand interviews and trained 1,500 people to speak and organized 10,000 activists in North America uh, through the Institute for Responsible Technology. And we and others, oftentimes originally inspired by us through our messaging, got the word out about the health dangers. So what is outstanding right now is that 48% of the world's population where they did the surveys believe that GMOs can lead to ill health, GMO foods, 51% of Americans. Now that's more people than we need in order to have a profound influence on the marketplace. Because if Nestle's or General Mills or any of the food, major food companies has a brand on the shelf and a competitor has a non-GMO brand of the same cookie or bread or whatever, they're gonna get more sales. And the GMO that's being used by Nabisco or whatever doesn't add any value to consumers. It generally allows the crop to be sprayed by Roundup or produce a toxin that can kill insects and might damage our gut and an immune system. So there is a scrambling now by major and minor food companies to eliminate GMOs so they too can put the non-GMO label on the product. And this was our design. So we are enormously successful at this point. And the biotech industry is totally aware. So they got together years ago and decided to try something, a little sleight of hand, saying, okay, we're gonna come up with a new generation of GMOs. Let's not call it GMOs. Let's call it gene editing. And let's describe it as breeding. And let's describe it as safe, predictable, and natural. And so they pummeled through lobbying and whatnot, elected officials and regulatory agencies with this disinformation campaign, using the same sentences they used to describe the original genetic engineering, which everyone knows is not predictable and not safe. But Fortunately, even though most people using gene editing, and it's been used hundreds of thousands of times, if not millions of times in laboratories all over the world, very few of the labs do the evaluation of the product that they've engineered to see what level of damage has occurred, what level of mistakes have occurred. But those that have were shocked in many cases to find that the predictable outcome was not actually what happened, but there were far more problems than they anticipated because many of the scientists believed the rhetoric of Monsanto and others, expected it to be free of mistakes. And when they finally looked at it, like they did in a study on human embryos, they described it as uh, chromosomal mayhem chromosomal mayhem. It is a disaster. It is a disaster. There are so many things that can go wrong. Mutations at the point where it's cut, mutations all around, even a study that showed epigenetic changes, changes in gene expression that lasted to all 10 generations of rats that they tested, which means we take, we make a change in the genome and its expression, not even if you didn't change the sequence somewhere, what genes are expressed, how they're expressed can change and be inherited and passed on to future generations. So we know that this is absolutely dangerous and yet the biotech industry has convinced governments and is trying to push other governments like the EU and, and, and the UK 
to say that gene editing is safe, natural, um, predictive, and it should be treated like breeding with no regulatory oversight. So no one today in the EPA, U, uh, USDA, or FDA needs to put any attention on a gene edited mushroom. It, was a, it wasn't approved, it was ignored, officially ignored by all the different regulatory agencies because it doesn't fit into their category. So the current state of GMOs in the world is that we have succeeded in moving the marketplace on genetically engineered foods. And now we need to change the laws, not just consumer behavior, but establish laws and a general understanding in the population, in popular culture, in school curriculums, in scientific societies, in institutional review boards that approve GMO research at, at, at schools. We need to get an, a profoundly universal understanding that we need to lock this technology down and not let it corrupt in a self-propagating way the gene pool that is so precious and necessary for our very existence.